Good afternoon. Today is Friday, the 2nd of January, 2009, and uh, the market is closed here. We finished with a strong gain for the day and for the week. Uh, today, the uh, the NASDAQ finished with a gain of $1.29 or 4%, putting its weekly gain here at 6.5%. So a lot of people complain about the low volume during holiday weeks, but I found that it's really a lot of times it's the best weeks to be trading as uh, stocks just kind of seemingly – uh, move higher on an absence of supply and that's what we have here so uh, it's been a good week and a great way to finish out the year as well the uh, Nasdaq 100 did obviously close above that 50-day moving average um, pretty significantly here now and also above this resistance that we've been watching uh, form for the last several uh, probably about six weeks or so. Uh, the market's been giving us signs that it's been getting a little bit stronger with these higher lows. And when we look at the 30 minute time frame, last week we saw the failed move below this support in here. A lot of times, as I say, from failed moves come uh, false move, from failed moves come fast moves. Uh, the market got above this little resistance that acted as support and it's been higher highs and higher lows since. Today, uh, it seemed like it got a little silly to the upside, but um, you certainly can't fight it. Uh, because fighting the trend like that will obviously uh, be very costly to you. So uh, the trend is your friend. The trend is higher right now in the short to intermediate term. There's no reason to uh, look for places to sell short until the market gives us reason. Anyone who sold short in here today, obviously pretty much every single person lost money uh, in the NASDAQ as we, we opened uh, – uh, up with a little bit of, uh, um, you know, kind of shaky in here, but the buyers quickly took control above that daily VWAP, and then it was just a, a nice, slow, steady, higher highs and higher lows in a real tight range, just grinding higher here. So we'll see what happens next week. We do still have that 50-day moving average declining. Obviously, we've done a lot of uh, uh, back and forth action in here, and it could clear the way for a little bit further upside. If we take a look at, uh, you know, for instance, a hourly time frame, we can look in here. Um, we, we did make it past as well that uh, two-thirds retracement of the election high. So we had seen that that level is where the, the bigger resistance has been coming in, about that $30.85 level. The more times resistance is tested, the more likely it is to fail. And a lot of people look at it and say, well, it's too extended to break out, but th that's a uh, oftentimes where the move will continue from because it catches more people off guard. This looks like the next likely potential upside target up near about $32 a share. That's where we had this gap lower and the market was subsequently unable to, to uh, gather, gather enough strength to get back above that in the declining five-day moving average uh, back here in early uh, November. We do have a, an advancing five-day moving average pretty much for all these markets now. So I think that uh, you, you want to look at pullbacks as a potential potential level to uh, to get involved on the long side. But we are a little bit extended here, and it's just something to be aware of. There's a lot of good stocks setting up out there. Uh, and, and really, over the last several weeks, uh, it, I found myself trading uh, a lot more of the individual stocks just because they're set up better rather than the, uh, the, uh, the ETFs, which have been uh, for probably the last six months what I've been trading 80% of uh, or 80% of my trades have been coming from the ETFs. Uh, but recently, uh, I'm, I find myself uh, getting back involved in more stocks as they've begun to stabilize and show signs of life. We are in a downtrend still, so you have to look at that and remember that it's a great trading environment, but uh, uh, I, you know, I'm not an investor, so I guess it doesn't matter. Um, the uh, oil oil had a big day uh, on. on uh, uh, Wednesday before the uh, the day off, and then followed through uh, with with more upside today. We look at that 10 minute time frame. It was getting really choppy in here uh, as it did battle with this declining five day moving average. The five day moving average flattened out after gapping lower on Wednesday. It recaptured this level and then uh, went on to squeeze some shorts, and now is making higher highs and higher lows. If we back it up to a 30-minute uh, time frame, you can see it made it uh, right up to this uh, trend line here that uh, formed from the November uh, 26th high, basically where uh, we saw the election, and also this level right here, 
uh, from the uh, 15th of December. So we are extended in a primary downtrend. We're also looking at this prior level of support in here. If you're long oil, and I know a lot of people have been trading the DXO and that sort of thing, just keep your stops tight. Short term, we've got a great uptrend. Maybe your stop goes underneath this level here. Um, but again, it, it's still, you know, oil got deeply, deeply oversold, but it does still remain in a primary downtrend. So you've got to be careful uh, in, in looking at all these rallies as just trading opportunities only for all these markets, including the semiconductors, which are coming back up to potentially do battle with that uh, 18, uh, what was this, about 1880 uh, or so. Uh, that level, or, or uh, about about 1860 is the level actually uh, on the daily time frame. We've seen the higher lows in here holding. This market uh, has been kind of chopping back and forth, making the higher lows. Coming up towards this level on the 30 minute time frame, we'd seen that uh, the $17 level, which had been important uh, before, uh, was tested and, and uh, you know successfully held uh, basically on a closing basis above this level here at 1650, 1660. That's too far away to really consider as far as support right now. Um, but we are stair-stepping higher, prior resistance acting as support, resistance here acting as support. So it's stair-stepping nicely higher. Perhaps we'll see some support on a little pullback towards $17.90. Uh, again, the bigger level is uh, right here at about that, uh, it's uh, about $18.60. Uh, to 70 cents right in there getting above that uh, you know people can look at this as you know is it a, is it forming a cup and handle what is a cup and handle buyers are getting more aggressive price wise because they're not waiting for pullbacks to 15 instead they took control at 16 and a half buyers are getting more aggressive time wise the time tested between uh, of this resistance you can see it's taken about half to a third to about a half the time for it to come back up to this level that increases the likelihood that it may break out um, the next potential likely upside target I think is basically between this high right here and uh, this level right there if you look at this uh, from the election highs we see that uh, um, you know this two-thirds retracement is further uh, you know further adds significance to this level that is now the area that you could consider the top of that cup and handle uh, but that's that's where the resistance is so and back to oil by the way I don't think that that was actually election high uh, that I was talking about uh, that the trend line came from this trend line right here was what I was talking about the election was obviously further back um, we do have also this trend line for the uh, for the oil uh, not to confuse anyone there, but uh, back to, uh, let's take a look at the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000 has been one of the stronger uh, groups recently. It broke, uh, you know, definitively back above this prior level of resistance. All these markets, it's going to see, it's going to be very important to see that, uh, you know, here 49 is defended next week by buyers uh, on the on the queues. It'll be important to see that this 3080 level is, uh, is defended by the buyers. And if they can hold above there perhaps we can continue up to you know uh, up higher for uh, maybe a couple weeks or so let's just take it one day at a time and manage risk though on the 10 minute time frame for the Russell 2000 we'd seen this market get back above the five day moving average and it's rising we've got uh, you know a lot of volatility in here particularly you know last uh, you know, last day of the year right at the end of the uh, at the end of the day but uh, on a, on, a, on today's basis we had that that you know slight pullback below the, the VWAP Buyers took control, held on to control, but again, this you know this late day uh, uh, volatility in the in the Russell is I think most pronounced of, of all the ETFs. Uh, overall, though, it looks like perhaps this market can continue now that it's broken past this level, the, this fifty dollar level. Perhaps it can continue up towards uh, this high here, and this is actually uh, let me just redraw it and. Uh, delete that out uh, but this this high right here at about fifty two dollars a share and then we have the election high right up here at about fifty five or so so these markets are making progress you can see the higher lows that, that have come in here we get these little shakeouts that scare people but you know the market recovers and that's the important thing is it's not the breakdown that matters so much but the subsequent action does the market rebuild and gather strength that's when you want to be involved in, in these on the long side the financial stocks were up 14 cents today uh, for the week these guys were up 7.5 percent and um, 
we've got them uh, you know right to that declining 50-day moving average so this this market obviously is underperforming uh, you know relative to the 50-day uh, moving averages we've got this uh, high here that uh, we've, we've broken this little trend line if we back it up to the hourly time frame you can see here that this market really uh, you know it held the 11 and a half level uh, last week which which is important and this week rather um, but we've still got uh, a much uh, you know not not quite as bullish look as the other ones in the intermediate term they still remain badly damaged on the longer term time frames uh, so these you know all these trades are just short-term trades that's the way you've got to look at them as far as levels go potential resistance up near 1325 and then this area here at 1375 we're gonna need to see the buyers take control and push it above this 50-day uh, moving average with some conviction though with the direction of the 50-day moving averages and all these markets still declining it says that you know take advantage of this upside while it's there but more than likely it's going to fail to hold uh, just kind of you know take a look at a stock like apple the first break a lot of times when it's still declining it'll suck people in for two or three days who get excited and say hey it's above the 50-day moving average but those rallies typically fail and this might be a, a little good you know apple might be a little guidepost for the market we'll see um, I think, you know, fortunately, Apple's lost a lot of its leadership ability here, and the market isn't so dependent upon it anymore, but uh, that's more of a tangent. The S&P 500 uh, also pushed past its $92 level, so we got to close above that 92 level and the, the recent resistance that's held it back for the last six, uh, six weeks or so. The pattern of a higher lows in here has been what's uh, you know what's what's been encouraging, um, but uh, you know we're, we're we're bouncing in a downtrend and the election highs were right around that 101 level. Uh, it seems like a pretty far distance away for now, but uh, I think that you know our next upside objective will be the level from this gap right here two days after the election and the level that was also defended uh, uh, intraday. And we can see that, uh, let's look, look, uh, look at the, where am I? Uh, uh, here's a 60 minute time frame you can see there's the resistance that we got back above and this is the level that I was talking about as our next potential area where we're likely to find some some selling and that's right about uh, what, what is this level here let me just get my trend tool back this level here is at about 95 and a, 95 and a half or so that's uh, you know this high here and the level of this gap so let's see if this market can continue to act constructive ideally we'd like to see some pullback find to see the market find some support maybe near you know even break down through that 92 level just because it's so so extended here just to get people thinking hey well that was a failed breakout but if as long as it can hold maybe 91 or so and then rebuild then perhaps we can continue higher it remains a uh, traders environment and uh, that's who's gonna be I think continuing to outperform in 2009 as traders not investors